Well, the sound of rain. It's very soothing. This is Self Talk Buddha Soul Channel. My name is Maria. Welcome. Here we talk all things spirituality, mental health, personal development, and growth mindset. And as much as today's topic of the video is controversial and it may seem like it's not to do with the concepts that I normally talk about, um, actually it has everything to do with what we talk about here. Primarily mental health and spirituality and some things that I have talked about in the previous videos um, like self-expression. I don't know yet what I'm going to, to call this video. Um, if I'm going to reveal uh, the topic in the, in the title or not, but if not, uh, the thing that I want to talk about is the transgender issue. The aim of this video uh, will be twofold. I want to inform people of the research that I have done on the subject. That is with the purpose of two things. First, to bring more compassion uh, towards transgender people and the whole issue in general from those who are maybe particularly not um, for this whole idea, maybe even very strongly against this whole idea. And on the other side, um, I want to make people that are very much for the transgender, transgenderism, I want to make them a little bit less naive. Because I feel like in this topic, there is a lot of the those two extreme sides of the issue. You know, people that don't see it as an issue at all and um, are very much for it and they don't see the implications short and long term on the lives of the people affected, their relatives, the lives of other people that, um, you know, our society in general. And then the, the other side of the argument is the people that are, you know, very extremely against it for the wrong reasons, you know, not seeing what is really happening within the lives of those people that are affected and, and just casting judgment. I want to close the gap a little bit uh, in this video and I hope I can do it. And before I start talking about the issue itself, I have to say that last week I was, I actually made a video on this topic already. I've, I've filmed and I've edited it and I didn't post because only a week ago my opinion on this topic was very much right-sided and there was no room for compassion or deeper understanding. I've done some research and that research is what made me rethink how I want to talk about this topic from now on. This issue is sort of multifaceted from the perspective of, perspective of it being a medical issue, a political issue, a societal issue, a historical issue. When you bring your attention to every aspect of the question, you really see the full picture. And when you see the full picture, uh, you may still have an opinion and you may still pick a side if you like, but you, you're never really extreme anymore. You, you don't feel extremely about anything anymore. The question has completely changed for me. It's not even about for or against, it's just completely different now. And so that's what I hope this video will do for you as well. And I think I want to start with the medical one because I personally have an extensive lifelong experience with the medical community, meaning I have had uh, multiple chronic conditions in my life and I've spent months in hospitals throughout my life and I've undergone surgeries and, you know, there, there was a lot. 
And from my personal experience, I know that the modern medical professionals are not equipped enough to deal with chronic conditions or conditions that are not acute, meaning like, you know, breaking a leg or having to have uh, an immediate surgery because of some complications or a heart attack or, you know, things that are acute and are um, imminent. You know, our medical community is brilliant at, you know, we, we have all the skills and the equipment that we need um, to, to deal with those situations. When it comes to mental health, when it comes to chronic physical conditions, um, whether, you know, it's, it's a lifelong thing or cancer, it's still in its baby stages to really be able to deal with, with these issues. And really, if you want treatment that is actually working for any of those chronic things uh, or lifelong things, you need to go into holistic therapy. You need to look into alternative forms of, of treatment. And I, and I laugh at that because what, what we call alternative is what we had for thousands of years. And it has proven to work in the past. It's just that when medical, modern medicine came about, a lot of those holistic things, they actually got banned in many, in many cases, or, you know, it, they, they were laughed at as, you know, there is no scientific proof of that. But the proof is evidential, you know, certain things work, whether science can explain them or not. And so a lot of things in, in the holistic world have been ridiculed. And so people look at them as uh, some, you know, wizardry and it, it's just um, rubbish, you know. The reason I'm going into this, this subject is because as much as a lot of people that are, you know, extreme pro-transgender, they, they, they don't want to look at the transgenderism as a, as a mental health question, it is that, um, you know, it's even a, f a few years ago only, it has mostly been referred to as a gender identity disorder, like we have personality disorders or mood disorders. Um, in the mental health world, you know, we've got these disorders and a gender identity disorder was just one of them. And it's only extremely recent that we've, we've shifted the, the agenda to, to, to call it... Um, transgenderism as a, as, a, as a part of our normal life. But if we look at it as at what it really is, and that is a mental health condition, gender identity disorder, which is not well understood, and I'm not going to claim that I understand it, nobody understands it. Not even mental health professionals that specifically deal with the, with this issue, gen, gender identity or things, they don't really understand it, you know, and if somebody claims that they do, they're lying to you, frankly, <laughs> you know, nobody understands it. But it is a, a fact that it has been, you know, since, since it's been known about, it has been a mental health condition. So what I'm trying to say is that our medical system is nowhere near equipped enough to deal with such a massive unknown issue uh, that we call transgenderism now. And yet, in the last only few years, what was it, since 2016, I think, um, we have allowed it to blow up into this big almost like a social media or media topic of discussion that then became a taboo subject even. And, and it's just become this very ugly thing, you know, of you can't talk about it and you just have to accept it as the norm. And it just became scary, you know? It's, it's like, um, it, it's just like an epidemic that went out of control that everyone is scared to talk about because God forbid you'll be judged for what you think about this, right? It's, it's, um, it's kind of scary where we, where we are in the world with this issue. So let's go back again to the medical side of things. 
the statistic shows that the, the boom within the transgender culture has been amongst young teenage girls, you know, t um, f around 14 years old. So uh, the period of puberty, period of, you know, not knowing who the hell you are and life is so confusing anyway. And, and now we added this extra layer of confusion of, of gender, you know, because apparently you can be anyone, right? Um, and God, how, how confusing can that be for, for a young girl? And I will link lots of videos down below that I have, you know, watched and, and thought about, um, you know, that talk about this, the experts that talk about this issue, <clears throat> the fact that it is, um, you know, statistically speaking, Predominantly, it is it is a, a social issue. It's not really even it's it's a severely misdiagnosed or overdiagnosed issue, um, you know, of something that is probably just a social um, adaptation of young girls that are trying to fit into a society that we have going on right now. Um, and and yet, medical professionals within the gender identity realm they rush to make a, a conclusion. I remember seeing this video of, of someone saying how normally in a medical diagnosis, what happens is, you know, you assess your patient and, you know, you undergo all different sort of investigations and, and whatever you need, tests, and then you come up with a diagnosis, which may or may not be true even, right? And I've experienced that myself. I've been misdiagnosed dozens of times in my life. But what happens with transgenderism is a young person claims that they are not the gender they're born with. They go to a medical professional um, and the, the professional tells them, they, they start with the diagnosis. For young children that are still going through puberty in, a, in, a, in, in UK, yeah, by the way, this is, you know, in America and Canada is even worse, but in the UK, um, you only need with with a teenager, you only need six sessions um, before you can put, be put on puberty blockers. Six sessions for an extremely complicated, not very well understood issue before you you can irreversibly damage a child. It is crazy. Um, and then the question arises, who the hell allowed that? And, and that's when the issue goes from the medical side of things to the political side of things, um, which I'm not going to again claim that I fully understand, but it is pretty ugly what's going on down there. And again, I will link videos down below where um, experts talk about <clears throat> how this whole movement is 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 um, uh, funded, you know, by the people that benefit from it, and and you know when I really started delving into that side of things, that's when my compassion towards transgender people really started emerging because <clears throat> I'm not denying that there is a confusion within these people's minds, right? It, it is real, and I validate it. You know, you may feel confused about who you are and you, you don't fit into the societal standards of genderism. My, my compassion came when I understood that these people are suffering anyway. They're struggling so much in their minds. And yet the only support they have and the only solution that they are offered is, you know, transition. Just, just change your life entirely and irreversibly in a lot of cases and that will solve your problem and that is the sad reality it doesn't solve their problem because statistically speaking uh, the the suicide rate and the rates of depression post transitioning are if they're you know in some in some uh, research it says that it's the same in other research it actually says it's worse and that's the very sad part, you know, if, if, um, if a child or a, a teenager tells their parent, because obviously you have to have parental consent to undergo all of these things, if they tell their parent that they're, they're, they're really struggling and they want to take their life, let's say, you know, um, un unless they will transition, what is a parent supposed to do? 
You know, they, they just want their child to be alive and happy. And, and if the medical community tells them your child will be happy if you let them transition and they might potentially die if you don't let them transition, of course the parents' only solution and only option is I will let my child do whatever they need to, for them to just be happy and be alive. And that is like, oh my God, how, how terrible is that? It's a tragedy. The fact that we have no options for these people. And there is research to say that, you know, not, not research, sorry, it was, it was an interview with people that work within gender clinics, uh, specifically with people that wanted to detransition, right? So they transitioned, they became the opposite gender, and, and now they realize I made a, the most, the biggest mistake of my life. And they tr go through the detransitioning, and there's clinics specifically helping those individuals. And the professionals in those clinics say, that most people that identify as, as the opposite gender to what they were born with, all they needed was extensive therapy. But guess what? <laughs> the governments are not going to fund that. The same way they don't fund extensive therapy for depression or anxiety. I was referred to cognitive behavioral therapy. <sighs> um, and I also only had six sessions. <laughs> interestingly enough, right? Um, because that's all the government funds. And it did nothing for me. In six sessions, if you've got severe mental health problems, which I had, um, or if you have something that, you know, medical community doesn't even understand quite, quite well, you know, even depression, it's been around since the beginning of times. And still we don't understand it, let alone newer topics like uh, gender identity dysphoria. And, and yet medical professionals claim, you know, that, that their conclusions are valid and, um, and should be acted upon in such radical ways like surgeries. Um, it's absurd and it is extremely sad. And, you know, and, and yeah, that, that's, that was the point where I really started feeling compassionate Towards, towards people that are affected by this issue. The reason why I was strongly against transgenderism is because all, all I saw, all I was exposed to on the internet was people um, advocating for it in such radical ways to say that, you know, this is the norm and, and you know, we should just accept it as the new norm. Well, if we do treat it as, as a mental health problem, which it is, you know, if we compare it to other mental health problems, let's say depression, it's like if you had a life, a lifetime of stress or trauma, it is only normal and natural to develop depression. Is it okay to be depressed? Should we normalize it? No, we shouldn't because it's not a happy life. And it's, 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 it's almost like, you know, if, if people are depressed, we should tell everyone else not to be happy, just to not offend them and, and for them to feel better. It's, it's like that with transgenderism. It's like, you know, don't talk about it, just accept them as they are. Um, and let's change the whole society to, to fit that in. We don't create society to fit depression in. <laughs> we don't let people take days off work when they're depressed, right? Maybe it would have been a good idea, but actually work therapy is one of the best, best therapies for depression, you know, being amongst people and things like that. So it's, it's just too complicated to create such, you know, concrete conclusions and, and pathways for, for solutions. Um, and like with the vast majority of chronic, lifelong, complicated health conditions, whether it's mental or physical health, the medical community strives to improve the symptom. It strives to get rid of the symptom and not really go in deep of what is actually happening. And you cannot do that in six sessions. You just can't. <laughs> it's ridiculous to think that you can. You're just scratching the surface uh, in six sessions. Um, 
And with, with the gender identity, it's not just a mental health problem. It's such a societal and historical problem as well, you know, of how we identify what a woman is <clears throat> and what a man is and, and how it really fits with our internal being as well. Because a lot of people seem to think that gender is, is, is purely a societal construct. And I personally don't agree with that. Gender is not purely a societal construct. And I think that's what people that transition and, and then still feel depressed and suicidal um, and God forbid actually commit suicide. You know, I think that's what they realize that they, they may become physically, they may look like a woman or, or a man, you know, the opposite of, of what they were born as. And yet something is still missing, something is still wrong. As much as a, a lot of the things that are involved in gender identity are societal and historical, there is something at the core of it that is just deeply biological and intuitive and we're born with. And, and, it, and it is connected to the sex. Um, it is not in the mind. And I think that's what the, the, really the argument is, you know, do you, it's not about for or against transgenderism, it is, um, do you believe that gender is purely societal construct and based on research and statistics on many different topics, including how transitioned people are still depressed because they still feel like the, the things are not right, I think we can make a pretty confident conclusion that gender isn't just in the mind and it's not just societal. It is something much, much more uh, inbuilt in us, in our body, in our cells, in our genetics. Um, and it's something you can't forgo with the surgery. And the fact that the medical community presses, you know, pre presses in that direction and, and claims that that is the solution, it's appalling. Um, I'm not angry with with the doctors because, you know, I mean, if if they if they keep their ego out of out of the question, you know, I'm I'm not angry with them. I'm angry with the system, and the educational system of of the med of the medical doctors, um, and how much holistic how much they're lacking that holistic approach to a human being rather than target the symptom, tar that narrow-mindedness, you know, of, of, okay, this is the problem, eradicate that. A human body and the mind, they work together. And until the medical community really uh, appreciate that and take that into account, we've got no hope. <laughs> bringing it back to my area of expertise, if you like. Truly, whatever it is that you're struggling with, whether it is gender identity dysphoria, depression, anxiety, social anxiety, uh, personality disorder, it really makes no difference um, in terms of where it is stemming from. The only variable amongst the, these issues is the degree to which you feel inadequate. Um, if you feel like you don't belong, if you feel unworthy the way you are, if you feel like you constantly have to change yourself to be happy, because I think that's kind of a pretty, to me, it's a pretty obvious um, direction to which transgender people go towards, you know, they, they feel like they have to change everything about themselves to feel okay, because it's like there is innately something wrong with them. You know, I was born the wrong way. Um, that to me speaks so deeply of, of that in acceptance of yourself. Um, and if only we, as a society, could create a structure where we heal that deeper um, root of a problem rather than just cover up the symptom because I think truly I think that bringing forward this idea that you know we should just transition people and we should call them what they want to be called you know in terms of their pronouns for me that's a massive cover-up of the issue that is not helping these people it is just covering up patching up their their pain that's not help
that is not help and that is not compassionate, it is not caring. Um, however much they're trying to make it look like that, um, it really it doesn't help because it doesn't, you know, I mean, in very mild, in very small amount of cases, it helps people to accept themselves more. Mm, but without that deep acceptance of, of themselves, uh, wh however they look or act or whatever, um, they just won't be happy. So I think if if as a society, I would we could create a system whereby we look at people as holistic beings and we treat them as such, and we change the stigma around alternative forms of therapy, including just talking therapy and, and building connections, real true connections, tangible connections with people, we wouldn't have any of this crap, you know? <laughs> um, <clears throat> this, this whole woke culture, council culture, the, 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 how triggered people are nowadays, you know, ADD, all of these things that have emerged in the last 30 years or so, it is all just um, a, a product of internet. Uh, and a product as a result of the internet um, of lack of true connection to each other, other people, to nature, to the food that we eat, um, and and to to what is really within ourselves. We're so trying to fit into this disturbed society that doesn't really work. Um, we, we need to change that paradigm. And I don't claim I have answers to how exactly to do that, but I know that the first step to doing that is coming back to yourself. And that can mean a lot of things, and I'm not going to delve into, <laughs> into all of those things. Um, please watch my other videos to sort of get, a, get a, a little bit more understanding of what I mean by that. But I just hope that this video has helped you if you felt strongly negative about this issue to feel more compassionate and understanding. And if you were on the other side of the spectrum and you, you, know, you, you couldn't deal with any or criticism, if you like, towards this issue, I hope you have become a bit more open-minded towards seeing how there is a lot of negativity uh, that can come with, or not even can, but does come with ignoring the deeper issue um, in the subject. So yeah, I hope I managed to bridge the gap a little bit between the two sides of the argument. And I really am looking forward to seeing what you think and what your opinion is. Um, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, hope you have enjoyed this content today. One thing that I want to mention, and uh, not to do with today's topic, but something I mentioned two videos ago is that I'm not going to edit my videos anymore. And I actually, I can't not. <laughs> and not just because of my perfectionism, but because my videos split into multiple when I film. In, in, on my card and I and I still have to put it through an editing software uh, to be able to combine it into one file so that I can upload it, uh, which is annoying. But as I'm in my editing software, I'm like, oh, maybe I can edit this and I can edit that quickly. And, and so I keep editing anyway. I can't help it. And actually I realized that I'd rather make a better quality video um, less frequently, you know, maybe every other week rather than every week, um, than put out something that I'm not entirely happy with. So, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in again. Again, please leave comments down below of what you think of this issue and what your opinion is and maybe some, send me some links down below to, to watch some interviews if you watch something interesting that is insightful, informative. And I will see you in the next one.